Okay. So now we should get some attendees. Hopefully Tom. Yeah, there's Tom. Okay. All right then. Uh, let's bring this meeting to order. This is the, can't remember what day it is, February 6, 2024, New Report Conservation Commission meeting taking place on the Zoom platform. This meeting is being recorded. First item on the agenda are the January 16th, 2024 meeting minutes. Anybody have any changes or questions? No. Okay. Take a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Okay. Uh, roll call. Uh, Steve Moore. Yes. Uh, Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Uh, do we have any Plum Island updates? Um, just maybe a quick. Um, Plum Island update would be that there was an MRBA meeting last Friday during which um, actually the, the majority of the meeting was dominated by talk about the Salisbury Beach issues and the, um, the restoration that they are trying to undertake over there. Um, with regard to Plum Island and Newburyport, the update, we got an update from Army Corps of Engineers on the major maintenance report that they're working on. They are doing some modeling of the jetty and sediment transport and currents and things like that to see whether or not modifications to the jetty would um, resolve the um, erosion problem on Reservation Terrace, which would be fantastic. They expect to have the results of the modeling done by end of March and a report on potential solutions sometime later in the spring or early summer. So that'll be really interesting and we're really hoping to get something good from them on that. Um, and they've also simultaneously um, received a request from us um, and DCR to initiate a, what's called a section 111 study, which is um, a request for them to consider whether or not they're their jetty, their coastal engineering structure, is the cause of uh, erosion on the dunes. And that's a separate study. If they, if let's say the major maintenance report says that there's nothing to fix with the jetty that they can do, then this 111 study, which would be going on simultaneously or sort of after, um, would have them look at whether or not if the if they can if we can show that the jetty is the cause of the erosion problem then what are some other possible solutions not involving changes to the jetty but like maybe do nourishment or some other types of solutions so we've got sort of two prong approach to getting the problem fixed on reservation terrace unfortunately neither of those um so any potential solutions wouldn't be coming very soon at least not for a couple, another couple of years, even how long it takes to get things funded and done through Army Corps. But that's the basic update on that. Um, and I think they've also continued to lose some ground out there with the nourished sand. Um, it's changing and shifting, but also shrinking. So um, at least that's the way it appears. That's it for um, updates on Plum Island. Um, anybody has any questions? No. Um, just um, an FYI for the commission that uh, the Community Preservation Committee got a a request for three hundred and something thousand for to cover um, part of the cost of uh, buying out. What is it? Three homes, Julie. Yes, three um, homes on Reservation yeah. Terrace. But. Uh, how does Rose. that how does that fit into the criteria? What's it coming? Open up space. There? It's open space acquisition. Oh. oh, okay. Yeah. Did they uh, get FEMA money and they're asking for this in addition or this is it instead of? It's in combination with. So this would be the local match portion of a grant that FEMA would be providing to purchase the homes and the properties and demolish the structures and turn it into open space. The federal government would be funding 90% of the cost of that. And then the city's share would be 10% of the cost. And so that's what 
as Joe said, the city's asking the CPC to cover because essentially we end up with public all right. Uh, Can I ask you one more old business question? And, and if you want to rather talk about this another time, that's fine. But I just saw that they, um, it looks like they're not going forward with the pond, the frog pond work because um, the bids came in too high. But do, you, do we know if like some other approach might be considered or we won't know until somebody approached asks us to look at it? Well, I spoke with, I did speak with Kim Turner, the project manager about it. And ask the exact same question. So the question, um, which is, you know, if the bids came in so high, what next? Do you just revise? Can you revise the project? Can you change it to make it less expensive? Do you have a, a plan B? And she essentially she said, no, that's that's the project. That's the, the project that they developed is the one that they think it will work the best and will actually be the most cost effective in the long run. So they're sticking with that. They're not going to modify it. What they're going to do is try to get other sources of funding to cover the increased cost. But for now, the whole thing is on, pa on pause so they can do that. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right, uh, on to our one and only application for the evening. Uh, a request for determination by Daniel Sweeney, 152 Northern Boulevard. So um, Tom, Tom Hughes and Eileen Graff are both here and I've moved them over both to be panelists. Um, and hopefully that works. And then I'll just to refresh your memory a little bit. This is the project on the corner of Northern Boulevard and I think it's like 53rd Street, yeah. And um, they're really, the proposal really didn't involve much within the commission's jurisdiction in terms of work to the exterior of the existing structure, other than the change in the location of the entryway and some stairs and things like that in existing sort of area, but it wasn't gonna increase the footprint at all. But we had a question at the last meeting where they, they described this because they had done an appraisal to make sure that they stayed under the 50% rule um, and in the appraisal, David Vine noticed that it said that they were adding um, new living space in the garage, in the back corner of the garage, they were going to add a bedroom, which would be below base flood elevation, because in this particular property, the garage is below grade. And they were going to add living space down there, which wouldn't be allowed. So we asked them to clarify that, to confirm where living space was going to be added. In addition, there was some question about whether or not living space would be added on the top floor in an area where they were lifting up the roof a little bit to create this stairway and roof deck. And so we wanted all the details around that, um, along with the substantial improvement determination form that we request to be submitted. And so it just took a little while, but... Um, Tom has submitted all those updated plans and clarifications. And Tom, why don't you walk us through that? I've got the, the revised plans and everything here. I want to run through. Uh, good evening. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting. Um, Eileen is also here if we have any questions that we need to turn to her too. But um, the thing that David Vines caught and I, I wasn't aware of was uh, a reference to expanded living space in the garage. And what was, um, you can see in that picture, there's a drive under garage right there. And in the back of the garage, there was like a little nook and in the nook was the oil tank. And they were taking the oil tank out, and Eileen thought, oh, that's a great place to talk a bathroom. So that that was the expanded living space, was kind of a, an innocent attempt to reuse an area that has an oil tank in it that was coming out. But it would have been an expansion of living space. The rest of the basement level is finished. There, There's an entryway, there's a studio, there's a, a looming room, which is the one labeled basement and a mechanical room. Um and what um, if we go to the proposed, you'll see what Eileen's doing is kind of rearranging that and uh, it, you know, but we're no longer doing anything in that uh, in that back area. Is this the nook right here? That's the nook right there. So there there was an oil tank in there. The oil tank will be removed, but we'll just the nook will probably just get a set of shelves in it and be used for storage in the back of the garage. I mean, it's it's not really a very 
usable area for anything other than that. Maybe it's a good place to tuck some bicycles or something. But um, anyway, so but the, you've added a bit. You've added a bedroom. Yeah, so it's a bedroom, but it's a rearrangement of living space. Um, it's already existing living space. So if you if you look at and Eileen can describe the the current use. I've never been in the house, but it's a finished. That is a finished basement area. It is living space. So under zoning in the PIOD, um, you know, it, that all complies. And with FEMA, if it's finished space, you can, re, you know, renovate and reorganize finished space as long as you don't exceed the substantial improvement thing. And we've provided that. Um, we're not, when I was in front of you last time, I even misunderstood. I thought there was a dormer under the roof deck. And if you remember, it looked like there was in the profile view. Um, there's really no expansion of FAR. In fact, the FAR drops by a couple percent on this project from 47 to 45. Um, what I had thought were dormers were as actually skirting around the roof deck um, just to make it look you know, like it, like it fit. And you can see in the upper right there that that's been removed. So it's just a roof deck um, coming out off the roof on the second floor and then just redoing the finished space on the, in the, the basement level. Um, and Eileen, I don't know if you want to, if you want to chime in and describe that kind of what the basement's like now when kind of what your, what your plans are with it, that might be helpful. Um, you know, as a wetland guy, I never really go in the house. So <laughs> they don't want me in the house. <laughs> they don't want your dirty boots. <laughs> yep. No, in fact, um, I get yelled at that at home too. I <laughs> trounce more mud around the place than you would care to know. You, you just don't learn, do you? I don't. <laughs> um, hi, good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Um. Thank you uh, for your time. Yes, if I can offer any clarity um, in what's intended here. So as these drawings show, I apologize if that was misconstrued by by the, the shingling. It was simply for that deck space up on the roof. It was simply just to enclose it so it's less sort of spindly. It was strictly just an aesthetic choice to try to put skirting around it, but there was never an intent to at change volume within. That was never needed. It was never a request, et cetera. So um, to make it clearer, we've just exposed it all. So you could see what really is happening there, which is just the structure to hold it up. And so that's what you're seeing there. Um, but that bottom left drawing, number three, is kind of the best way to describe how uh, sort of to, to segue into what Tom's getting to, which was that lower level, that basement level, is really that's how they come into the house quite often, especially with weather, et cetera, rather than going all the way around. Because this this elevation, number three, that's where the parking is. So they just go in that 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 base I'll call it basement level entry and that all of that first level that ground level is really how they kind of come in and and use a space and um um Dorothy Sweeney has um I'll call it it's like a a big machine that's what she uses the the what was the space labeled basement but it's kind of her workspace and so she she um that's the proposed um um, but in the existing exactly. So really, I, I mean, it is it is part of their living space the, the, this entire time. They just really like to reorganize some of it so that upstairs took, you know, shifted and took some of it. And another change you'll see was the staircase. That was a, another major change. So the staircase goes where Julia just had the cursor. Exactly. So, um, so those are the, the sort of reorganizing, call it sort of a little bit more, um, more finished in level, um, some window changes. Um, but as Tom mentioned, they are, they are in FAR standards, we are going down a percentage because they're giving back some of the living space that's in the top left corner to, to be outside deck slash circulation space because it gets you up that staircase in the top left corner is what gets you up to the roof deck so that's where we gave back um, some living space in order to create access 
um, to the top floor, top roof deck. So um, hopefully that helps explain what's happening um, um, both internally and externally, but happy to answer any other questions um, as, as, as you guys continue with your conversations. Thank, thanks, Eileen. Um, and the other thing to note is, as as Julia pointed out, um, we're doing a little bit of exterior work, which is re uh, location, relocating entry, and then um, a stairway that comes down into an area that's currently gravel drive. So there's really no there's no vegetation impacts. There's no real dune impactful elements of the project, um, and we have provided you with the um, you know, with the uh, the calculations, we do we do have a planting area in the back left. You can see if the lot there's like a, a concrete patio. We're removing a little bit of that and putting some plantings in because I think there's like a negligible change from the relocation of the walk from the stairs. Someplace there was a very small impact, so we've we've compensated for that by planting back there and removing part of the uh, the concrete patio. It's one of those concrete block kind of patio things. Okay. So, I mean, it's a relatively simple project in terms of outside. It was just really those questions. I mean, that was a good catch from David on the um, the living space, the garage thing. I mean, I think I think the building inspector probably would have squashed that if, if it had gotten that far regardless, but you know, we can't take garage space under, you know, below flood and convert it to living space, uh, clearly. Okay. We have any other questions or concerns? Not hearing any. Mm -hmm. uh, then can we get a motion? Uh, negative two is without uh, conditions. Yeah. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion to issue a neg negative two um, determination. <clears throat> I'll second that. Okay. Uh, roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you. Take care. Thank you very much. Yeah, bye. Bye. All right. Um, so that's all we have this evening. Um, Julie, did we discuss something about tweaking the regulations a little bit? Yeah, potentially because um, I forwarded all of you the new DEP proposed regulations for mm -hmm. land subject to coastal storm flowage. Um, and, and also they are making some changes to the stormwater management standards. But, you know, we have, have had our land subject to coastal storm flowage regulations in place for a while. And we've, you know, attacked the sea level rise issue and all of that. Um, and we also already have had our own Plum Island regulations, which would say no new development in the V zone, et cetera. Now, finally, DEP is coming out with regulations that also say no new development in the V zone. And they, but, but then we, we talk about AO and AE and all of that in our ordinance. They talk about what's called, what they call the moderate wave action zone and the minimal wave action zone. And it's not exactly like AO versus AE. It's a slightly different delineation that you can find on the FEMA's website, on the FEMA maps on their website. But um, it's a little different than ours, and they have slightly different regulations than what we have. So the question is, should we try to update our local regs to match DEPs? Should we leave ours alone and just let DEPs new regs override ours? Um, it's just hard to know. They're not adopted yet by DEP, so they're just in um, draft form, and they're having a comment period right now, and then they anticipate adopting them like later this summer. So maybe we just wait until the summer and see like how they actually come out and take a look at them at that point and see. 
Yeah, that, so, that might be better. Go ahead, Steve. Are they are they stronger than ours or they are in some ways stronger than ours. So they don't they don't um require applicants to look at sea level rise the way we do, where we'll re say you need to plan for 40 inches of sea level rise, etc. They just say no new development at all in the V zone. Uh, we say that as well. They also say um for redevelopment in the V zone or in this moderate wave action zone, which is usually some more something like the AO zone. Um, they say redevelopment, you can rebuild what was there, but you can't add onto the footprint. Right now we allow a 20% increase in footprint within the V zone or the AO zone for our redevelopment. And they're saying no increase in footprint whatsoever. They're also saying that they need two feet of freeboard above base flood elevation, which we already say, but that's what we say on Plum Island. Their, their regulations would apply everywhere. They would require two feet of above base flood elevation on the mainland as well. And we don't currently do that. So um, there it is, it's gonna mix things up a little bit for sure. I think Julia, um, and, I, and I should know the answer to this, but I admit that I don't. I think that where they're considered a higher level, if you will, of government, that their regulations would take precedence over ours. And so I think we may ultimately have no choice. I don't, um, yeah. I'm not sure who, right. who could answer I, that question for us, but yeah. I, think they, I think you're right. They would be, if they're more restrictive than ours, then they take precedence, right. but yeah. it's where, I just don't want it to get so confusing that ours are referring to different flood zones and like it, it might get complicated because we have two sets of these regulations for land subject to coastal storm flowage that even though theirs may be more restrictive and so we would go with theirs, ours have certain elements that theirs don't have. So we would have to come up with sort of like, in, in, in applying them, we would be using a combination of both. Well, do you know from the people at DEP whether they expect to get a lot of pushback on the regs? Because they have a whole comment period now that they have to go through before anything happens. Yeah, and I, actually, I don't know. I haven't heard from them what they think about that. I'm sure there will be a lot of public comment. I'm sure there will. In fact, I've heard from consultants in town who you know, represent property owners who disagree with a lot of what's in there um, because they don't want the restrictions um well so i think it's, it's, it's good good yeah it's good to be thinking about it but then i, I think you know who knows what the, what they're going to end up with after they get through the comment period so yeah i, I think premature we, to do anything yeah we we should uh rehab our regulations once they're theirs are finalized and you know and, and some i i would think we we would want to uh you know use the same language and and you know Adding same their standards. Stuff, keep the stuff that yeah same standards just you know add their stuff and then add our little extras right maybe refer to theirs for most of it and then just add in what's what's different from ours rather mm -hmm. than trying to i mean they know now that we have a different set of regulations for plum island right mm -hmm. yes and nobody's ever raised that as being a problem no if you all wanted, you know, I would love it if you guys would take a look at those new regs and the summary, at least the summary, but also you really don't, that they don't do a very good job with that summary that I sent you. It, I, I might have sent you my own summary, which is a little bit better. Their summary is very general and hard to really get at what their, what the real changes are. But if you read their redlined version of the regs, you can really see what they're doing. And um, if you have any comments on it, um just or questions send them to me and i will incorporate them into a comment letter that we're going to provide because john eric white the city engineer is going to provide some comments on the stormwater piece and so we'll put together general okay so that's it all right um yeah julia what about that notice of violation we had out on plum island for that patio I know. I sent them another notice, and I've not heard from anybody. Um, it's gonna. I, it's Maybe just, it's time to up the ante and do an enforcement order. It could be. 
I and I didn't get back the certified mail slip. Hmm. So and I didn't sometimes I get back like it was rejected. In this case, I didn't get anything back. So I don't know what that means. Um but yeah. Um maybe I will give them another week. Next time you're out there, I want you to go knock on their door. Yeah. <laughs> oh, then we could do that. I'll see if there's a car in the driveway. Yeah, I, I'll go. Yeah. I'll go out there and I'll see if I can talk to somebody. Uh, it's possible they could be away for the for the winter season if they're snowbirds. You never know. Yeah. Of course, I'm sure they would be getting their mail one way or another, but you you'd think it would get forwarded, but. Right. Okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll see if I can get some sort of update on that one for the next meeting. I mean, I'll just go out there and see. Uh, All right. Anything else? Uh, one more. Motion to adjourn. Oh, gosh. Okay, wait. wait one more thing. Oh, oh, next oh. meeting, they, we have nothing on the agenda. Nothing came in on before the deadline. Nothing's coming in. That would be February twentieth. So I know Joe's away that week anyway. But it looks I'll like I'll be away. I'll be away too. I will be away too. So we'll we'll just cancel that meeting. There's nothing. There's nothing. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. So we'll see you all. Everyone have a great February vacation. Hang on. We're we we. I didn't get a second. We have, oh, okay. we haven't voted. Second. <laughs> Roll call. Steve Moore. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. Bill Mullen. Yes. And I vote yes. See you in March. Wow. Okay. Okay. See everybody. Bye. 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 Bye.